Good evening, Rumble, YouTube, Instagram, and uh, maybe not Facebook. But good evening, y'all. I'm 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 exhausted. I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm, I'm a little I'm a little tired tonight, but it's not gonna stop me from uh, working a little bit of a uh, technique on the bags. I'm gonna hit the uh, double end bag. I'm gonna set the double end bag up right here, and in between work the heavy bag a little bit. Go back and forth, work some distance management, work a little bit of rhythm, timing, uh, some speed and power on the heavy bag as it pertains to that, and uh, yeah, probably get out of here within about a few, maybe 30, 45 minutes or so, y'all. Uh, I'm really aiming to dissect uh, my technique, my habits, tendencies, pick up on some things that I can definitely clean up for sure, and uh, try to get a little better than I am at this moment in time. So with that said, y'all, I'm gonna get into the warm up, get into the setup, and we'll see y'all in it. Boom! We are back in it, okay? I tried this, this is take three, take three. Boom, round one, we in it, we in it, y'all. Okay, here we go. Working some hands, getting into it, just getting a little bit of balance, getting a little bit of rhythm, working both sides. As I said in the previous video that I tried to get, if you ain't working both sides, you need to be. Don't listen to your boneheaded boxing coach talking about you can only be southpaw or orthodox. No, you can be both, okay? You can be both and you need to be both because people getting way too dangerous out here for you to just be southpaw or orthodox. I don't get it. It's like, why do you only want to have weapons on one side? What happens when that side gets compromised? You just, you, that's it? You're done? It's, it's ridiculous. Back to the video, y'all. Back to the video. Working on a double end bag for her here, round one. We got two minute rounds on each bag with one minute of rest in between as we move. Working a nice little rhythm, nice little bounce, boom, nice little hook kick into round kick. You'll see a lot of that in Taekwondo tournaments, sport karate tournaments. It's, it's just a quick little thing. Not really meant to knock anybody out, but it'll definitely it'll definitely wake you up a little bit if you're on the receiving end of that, okay? I'll just be honest with that. I've been on the receiving end of a few of those, okay? With that being said, when we're working the double end bag, why are we working the double end bag? You'll usually see this tool in boxing gyms, particularly to enhance hand-eye coordination. Well, if you learn how to kick one of these things, you can enhance hand-foot coordination, which is extremely helpful if you have trouble landing your kicks or understanding how far away you need to be in order to land said kicks. It's, it's been an invaluable tool to me to enhance my kicking game alone, but in, in actual sparring sessions, it, man, I can, I can put my leg on your face, no problem, get it over your shoulder, no issue. I can put my side kicks on your ribs, no problem. My leg kicks will go to your quads, without a doubt. It's like laser guided missiles, because I work that thing. Now moving into round two, working a lot more power. Working a lot more speed, working a lot more power on the heavy bag. Nice little boxing combination right there. And boom, left rear kick. Switching sides, little shuffle, nice teep. Boom, right into the knee. Back into right leg forward or southpaw stance and then into that spin side kick, back into southpaw. Again, moving around, y'all. Moving around is so important. Little spin back fist there. Boom, little one, two, five combo with a teep into a jump knee. Uh, I could probably do a lot better job of keeping my hands up after some of these bigger combinations. Uh, when you work a bag, when you're working by yourself, it's really easy to just, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be a little bit more relaxed on it versus when you got somebody up in front of you who's actually posing a serious threat. It's like, no, I gotta keep those hands up. I gotta keep those hands up because if not, homeboy's gonna come over the top and he gonna crack. We don't want that, okay? But moving around on all sides, little spin hook kick right there, switching back into southpaw. Boom, spin hook kick, switching back into orthodox. Look at that, that is so important, y'all, to be omnidirectional, okay? Omnidirectional is better than one dimensional. Two is better than one, I'm sorry, it just is. It is what it is. I don't make the rules, I just, I just kind of follow them. It, 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 it is what they are, they are what they are, okay? They is what they is, they are what they are, whatever you want to call it. That's what it is, that's what we're doing out here, okay? So, uh, what I was trying to say is it is very important to make sure that you are moving around the bag, even if you're just by yourself doing heavy bag work or double end bag work, because in a sparring situation, or God forbid an actual altercation, you're not gonna be in one place. You're not gonna, you don't, or rather, you don't wanna be in one place for 
any one particular amount of time. You always want to be moving around. You are, a, a moving target is much harder to hit than a stationary target. That's why a lot of people stroke their ego with a heavy bag and just wail on it. And that's where the famous Bruce Lee quote comes in saying, bags don't hit back because they don't. But they'll make you really feel really good about yourself. They'll make you feel really good about yourself. So round three, going back to the double end bag, a little double jab, a little double jab, going into a nice little flurry right there, working, 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 working some speed, working some timing, distance management, moving around again. Boom, big old rear round kick with the check coming up right after that. Very important. Now you'll notice that I'm bouncing around a lot more. My hands are down. My, ha my front hand is, boom, switch, compasso right there. My hands are down because I am working a lot more of my, my, my homegrown root style of point karate, sport karate, uh, which is a lot of uh, bounce, a lot of flash, a lot of explosion. Um, and over the years, working some, look, oh, those, I, I love working those angles. On this double end bag, you can work so many angles, and that's just one of them. Working that front leg side kick, Front leg side kick is a deadly, deadly weapon. Just like a, it, it almost acts as a, uh, as as a, as a joust, as a, as a get back measure. That's like my longest weapon right there. It's very explosive and it'll keep people at bay. So it gives them something to think about before just rushing in on me. And it allows me to then have the ability to go in whenever I want to. Okay, because they're they're worried about that kick. I can throw that kick out first and then follow it up with the hands. Or I can throw that kick out as they're coming in and give them something to respect, something to think about before just rushing in on me, as I was saying, okay? Working again, still on the double end bag. Got a nice little flurry working up here. Got a nice little flurry, changing up the angle, looking at the time, making sure we're good. Circling out, circling out. I'm in southpaw at the moment. Boom, nice little lead hook kick right there. Switching into orthodox here, left foot forward. Lead hook kick as well, a little lazier. But eh, you know, that's my that's my less dominant side. I gotta work on that. Definitely gotta work on that. Back up on the heavy bag. Now I'm really working. Boom. Big old big old side kick. This right here, this is point karate right here. This, this, this is that sideways bladed stance, switching on both sides, working some hands. My hands are, well rather my hands are down but forward, y'all. You'll see people like Steven Wonderboy Thompson. Raymond Daniels, this is this is that style right here, y'all. And unless you're active, like within the NBL, within the ISKA, you're not gonna see this kind of style at your regular Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, MMA gym. You're just not gonna see it. Now, granted, it's a bit of a difficult style to learn. And if you're just getting into martial arts or you're going into your run of the mill MMA gym, this style in particular probably might not be worth your time to learn. But I was brought up into it from a very young age, from the age of about nine years old. And I competed all over the United States in NBL, ISKA tournaments, uh, where this style is utilized. And there's a, it's just a very handful of, of martial artists who, who can adequately utilize this style. But within this round, I'm really working it, really kind of just dusting the cobwebs off and making sure that I still got that, I still got that heat, I still got that bounce, y'all. Changing angles, switching sides, fast hands, deadly kicks, y'all, deadly kicks. Boom, boom, switching. That was a two, three right there. Classic boxing combo, classic boxing combo. Again, working that drill. Two, you miss with the two, and then boom, sets it right up for the three. Love it, love cracking the bag with that thing. Love cracking the bag with that thing. Checking the time, making sure we're good, still shuffling around, sideways stance, bladed stance to be technical. Boom, nice, sick, one, two, in and out. I do damage, I don't take damage. Switching sides to make sure I got it on both sides, covering my bases. Now we're back on the double end bag, working up, working, ooh, here we go. This right here. This is where that rhythm, that speed, you saw me switch stances from southpaw into orthodox. Boom, nice little roll. Boom, three, switching, three, switch these angles, y'all. Now I've been working on the double end bag for at least four years now, at least four years, since 2020. I actually, during, during the pandemic, I was able to make my own double end bag out of some bungee cords, duct tape, and volleyball. And I had a blast working on that thing. A blast! I would spend hours in my in my then uh, driveway, had it hung up to the roof, nice and strung up, and I would just 
I would play with that thing, y'all. I, I can't emphasize enough, if you're trying to learn martial arts and you're trying to just expose yourself to as many things as possible, don't look at it as such a grind, y'all. This is fun. You can have so much fun with this, and if you have fun with it, you're gonna learn so much more quickly. You're gonna have such a better attitude when it comes to training, because it's not this 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 David Goggins, who's gonna carry the boats kind of thing. It's this, man, I get to go out and get to play a little bit. It's just fun, it's just play. It's play with a little bit of structure. And that's all it really takes, y'all, to, con to, to continue to make progress in this game, whether you're doing it by yourself or you're doing it with a group of, of, of other practitioners. Uh, have fun. Have fun. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, this is round, I want to say, five? Yeah, round five on the double end bag. Third round on the double end bag, but round five in total. Uh, just, you know, working these hands. My dog going crazy. My dog is going crazy. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but my dog is going crazy. And finally, to finish it all up, my uh, back on the back on the heavy bag, working these hands, working the fast hand combos, fast hand combos. I really wanted to gas these shoulders out, y'all, uh, to really introduce that conditioning aspect, that sports-specific conditioning aspect um, to my shoulders, working some frames, some body shot, uh, and then a nice little spin hook kick to finish it off. Going into the southpaw, nice jab, circling, switch, boom, boom, one, two. You'll see a lot of people like Michael Venom Page, MVP, he'll do that a lot, y'all. He'll circle to the outside, switch last minute, and boom, dart in with a one, two. The angle's beautiful, and it lines up that two for a perfect flush shot. If you've seen uh, Kamaru Usman and, uh, and Jorge Masvidal, when Usman catches Masvidal with that nice cross, it's just that, oh. That flush too. Ugh, it's beautiful to watch. It's beautiful to watch. That's one way that you can set that that up precisely. Okay, working some knees here. Got uh, got my hands in contact with the bag. Just you know, working these body shots with the knees, pushing off on the bag, and uh, slowing down a bit for sure. I was gassed at this point. Y'all can see the sweat build up pretty pretty uh, substantially here. Got the knees going again. This is more drill like than anything. You really wouldn't do that many knees like back-to-back -back successively with, uh, with, a, with a live partner, unless they were letting you, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, just getting some elbow work in, you know? Getting that close range work, getting that close range up and closer uh, personal dirty boxing, nice little spin elbow there, and we're gonna switch sides, little dip, little roll for a final spin elbow. So, with that said, y'all, that concludes the training footage. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. Like, comment, subscribe, or dislike, whatever floats your boat. And until next time, we'll see you soon. Peace.